Hey everyone, thank you all for tuning in to this week's episode of Zas Podcast. Uh, we fell into a little bit of technical difficulty this week, it was my fault. Um, unfortunately, 40 minutes into Hayden's video, uh, it actually stops. So the last 20 minutes of the podcast will just be my face. Um, I've kind of figured out a way to rectify that for future podcasts, but unfortunately, there was no way of trying to salvage that other 20 minutes. I didn't have any footage or anything like that. So apologies from me. Uh, hope I'm going to try and make sure it doesn't happen again. Uh, but anywho, enjoy this week's episode and let me know what you guys think. See you later. To the episode. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are live. Thank you for everyone for tuning in to episode eight of Zaf's podcast. Um, I just wanted to make a special, which is a bit of a milestone for me, actually. Um, today I hit five, sorry, 10 five star reviews on Spotify. So if I can really, yes. Happy, yes, sir, if I can really happy about that. So thank you for everyone for supporting me over, you know, the past, probably say I've been doing it for about either two to three months now. So pretty happy about that. Um, today I have a very special guest, someone who I haven't seen in a very long time. We met through the DJ industry many, many moons ago. I've stopped DJing now for about, I think four years is how long, you know, I haven't been DJing for. Can you hear me properly, by the way? Yeah. All right. All right. Sick. I Sounds just want to make sure. All right, man. Uh, warm welcome to Hayden Short, Mr. DJ Shortstar. Thank you for having me. No, of course, man. Now, thank you for coming on. I wanted to ask, well, before I ask you these questions, I wanted to get you to kind of introduce yourself just yep. to let everyone know who you are, what you do and all that sort of jazz. Yep. So... Hayden, I trade under DJ Shortstar. It's my Elias. <laughs> um, I started DJing at about 14 years old. 14? 14, yep. Yeah. I'll give you a little backstory. So my dad is a DJ and MC full time. Yep. He's trying to retire, but I'm trying to let him come back and work for me. <laughs> uh, 14 years old, did my first wedding. Wow. The client complained and said, geez, the DJ was good, but Christ, he's young. I had no facial hair. I was a 14-year-old little boy... Five foot, five, probably five foot little. My mum was coming to set up with me. My mum was coming to set up the gear because I couldn't reach the cables at the top. Really? So mum was setting up. I had the talent yeah. and mum was coming to do the hard yards for me and the, the hard work. So I'd do the, the job. Labor work. Yeah, and she'd stand there with me pretending that she was helping me, but I was actually doing the job. Yeah, wow. So we were charging fees. My dad would take a cut and then he'd give me like 300 bucks. Oh, so your dad was getting the gigs and yeah. you were going out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because dad was still working up or downstairs. It was at Taronga Centre. Yeah, yeah. And he'd do, I'd do the weddings. 14, 15, 16, he'd give me random work. So I'd do 21st and stuff like that. That's and hectic, man. Yeah, you started now way younger than what I did. Yeah, it was, um, it was an experience. It was fun. But it was also like real daunting. Because oh. I was thinking if it was like, if it's like this all the time, people judging you and... I look so young, but I didn't realize I was 14 years old. Yeah, Doing yeah. someone's wedding is possibly 25 plus. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting there going, oh, I can't be like this for the rest of my life, can the, it? The one thing I used to hate about, um, not really hate about doing weddings is mm. I always felt there was way more pressure when you mm. do a wedding only because it's their special day. Yeah. And you don't want to fuck up that day. Yeah. And it, it's not just that. Like if you fuck up that day, then it's a lot of word of mouth that travels around, especially around the weddings and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So that used to really be daunting for That's me. That's what I love as well. You love that. I love the, I love the pressure, but I, I don't like the reliability on the equipment to not fail. Mm. That's the only thing I'm worried about. Yeah. Sometimes the equipment does fail, but knock wood, it hasn't happened to me at a wedding. Has it ever? At, so you've never had a point where you'd be DJing and then all of a sudden one CDJ will die? Uh, so at the moment I'm using the RX2. Oh, so it's a controller. The one controller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's easy to take around on boats and stuff like that. So I can just lug it up in one, one yeah. case. Um, but yeah, it's, it's happened. So the emergency loop comes on with the Nexus twos. Yeah. Yeah. But the RX, RX two, uh, where was I recently? I was at a private event recently where I did have an issue. It did stop. It, it stopped, stopped. And I turned it off and the power was still on. Yeah. I, I unplugged it and the power was still on and I'm thinking, what's going on? It wasn't a major event. So it was, it wasn't a wedding. It was yeah. just a... I'm not even sure what I was doing. Might have been something like just background music somewhere and it just stopped. Yeah. And I said to him, yeah, this is what could happen. Because earlier on they were asking me, has anything ever happened? I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> and, and then, then I said, hey, hey, come here, look at this. It's just happened. It's the first time in about 190 jobs that it's happened. Yeah, yeah. Fucking so, hell. Yeah, it's scary, but that doesn't happen much. 
Yeah, yeah. Keep your equipment serviced, I think. I was guilty of that. That was mm. one thing I, th- I'm, when I had my CDJs, because the first pair that I ever owned was a CDJ 850 yeah. and a DJM 800. So I yeah. thought I'll get a decent mixer. This was how many years ago? This would have been about, I would have been 18 when I start, like when I bought my gear. So this would have been, fuck, I'd, I'm trying to even think, like maybe 2011, 2012, yeah. somewhere yeah. there. Mm-hmm. Fuck, that was a long time ago. Fuck me dead. Yeah, 850 is the USB input. Yeah. One of the first ones with the USB. Yeah, that's the one, man. Revelation. I know, that was that huge. Was that was why I got it, right? And it was yeah. like relatively cheap in comparison to oh, the 2000s, right? Big time. Yeah. It could be a quarter of the price. It was, I think at the time it was about 900 bucks to a thousand brand new. And the wow. CDJ 2000s were, they were over 2K each, two and a half K each. So it was like nearly a third of the, a third of the price. Almost. Have you seen what the 3000s are worth now? Bro. 5,000 each. But that was a store DJ price going in stock the other day. I don't understand though why or how they can justify that price though. I don't. I don't. They're not that much of an upgrade. Maybe in speed and quality, but quality of what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they just they run the market. You can kind of charge whatever you want. And ten thousand dollars, you haven't even got the mixer yet. That's just the CDJs. Do they rock the the three thousands in clubs or they still rock the two thousands? Well, I played at Fiddler recently. Yeah, and three thousands were there. So you're and still playing nice. clubs? Yeah, I am. I'm, yeah, I'm dabbling. I'm still in. I'm still at Ivy every now and then. Yeah, yeah. I'm still Greenwood Hotel. So you could. That's, that's still still Fiddler. I know. Clubs, I'm man. trying to keep the standard, at, if I, if possible, yeah. where I think I enjoy as well. Mm. I don't want to just go there and be like, oh, look at me. This mm. is where I play. Like, how cool is this? I'm not doing it just for that. I'm also doing it for money, but also because I really enjoy it. Like, yeah. I love the people, the DJs that are there. I love the contacts that I have. Yeah. You kind of, like, move away from the people that you don't really vibe with mm. and the things I don't vibe with. Like, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't I was like that do too. drugs. Like I when mean, I'm boring when you DJ, to the others. When you DJ? At all. At all. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, I never, like, I did drink. Yeah. So, what, socially. Yeah, yeah. But I never did drugs. Mm. But when I would DJ, yeah. the only time, I would never drink if mm. I was getting paid. Yeah. If I wasn't getting paid, I was yeah. getting absolutely thrashed. Because I was like, I'm doing this gig for free. I'm yeah. going to have fun. No, you 100%. I mean? Most most DJ, most people are like that. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. If I enjoyed it, I would. Just yeah. Don't. Oh, that's fair enough, man. Yeah. I feel like though, when, if you do drink, sometimes you can really fuck up your set too. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you've I seen drank, some people. Like, oh, it's, it's uh, some of them really bad. I actually drank, I mean, it's, I say drink, I had a drink. Yeah. At a gig recently, it was the 21st. The birthday boy was a good bloke. And he was like, you want a drink? And I was like, okay, chuck, chuck one over. I had one. Yeah, yeah. Felt fine, obviously, but it was a drink. So it counts as drinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For me, for me, that's big. Like yeah. people were like, Shorty, what are you doing having a drink? I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I just did. Did you it enjoy it though, at least when you had that drink? <laughs> no, not, not really. It was funny. I'll have it. I'm not, I'm not enjoying it. Yeah, I'm yeah. Having it, but it's funny you mentioned that because mm. I had another mate who was on the podcast and we all said... Do you remember what it was like to have your very first drink? Yeah. And when you drink it, it's like, oh, yeah, what the I, fuck? I saw this one. I saw this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. man. So, like, it's yeah. so true, though. Yeah. So, one thing I wanted to ask you so, you already told, like, pretty much yeah. how long you've been doing Just ruined your intro. This was the whole intro. What are we, <laughs> 10 minutes in? Are we? <laughs> I don't uh, know. Who cares, bro? We're just going to have fun anyway. Yeah. So, you already said, so how long have you been DJing for now? Be 13 years now. 13 years, yeah, man. 13. Fuck, that's Oh, mental. going on to 14 in September. That's crazy. 14 yeah. years, man. 14 years. And you're still going strong. You don't, you don't ever see like an end in the horizon or maybe a, a change or anything like that? End to my career, no. Okay, that's good. But around December when I'm doing like 20 jobs in like 25 days, oh yeah, at the end, every January, I think about it. What should I do? Like, should I change careers? And then I give it two weeks off and I'm fine. It's just Are you music. really that busy during December? Like just because I know there's a Christmas party. Yeah, exactly. All right. that sort of shit. Christmas parties, a lot of weddings in December. People love, it's a summer month. It's not as yeah. hot as January or Feb yet. Yep. Um, so it'd be Christmas parties, corporate events too. A lot of the corporates did their end of year stuff. Yeah, yeah. So weddings, corporates, Christmas parties, uh, year six farewells as well, school yeah, formals. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they're all that. there. It's just midweek. Usually I have my Monday off to play my Oztag. Yeah, yeah. And then I'll go Tuesday to Sunday. Well, that's why we're recording tonight because you play Oztag. Yeah. And you're part of a world team but, and we're going to get into that yeah, too because I'm so curious about that. Yeah, cool. Um, so one thing I wanted to ask was, so do you specialize in any type of music? Like when you DJ or are you kind of an all-round sort of DJ? Like you play R&B, you play house, play 
retro, play everything. Well, this is that's the thing. In 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 most clubs, you do get painted with the brush of whatever genre you are. Mm. And at the moment, I'm R and B. I'm hip hop yep. and R and B. New, old school doesn't matter. And a lot of the weddings that I do as well love that genre. So we stick to both. Mm. We stick to both the R and B and hip hop, and also old new school, and then just everything else. Yeah. Because I love playing everything. Yeah. I don't want to play Gasolina into Hips Don't Lie every week. Yeah. Like it's the same two tracks. You'd know. We, we used to play together. It was the same stuff each week and they're yelling at you for the same songs. I so, don't know if the camera's <laughs> going to pick this up, but I fucking know. And it's yes. always the same fucking, yeah. re- same request every fucking week. Play Drop It Like It's Hot. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Everyone's going to love it and you get that same thing. Everyone's going to love it. Play it for us and you don't, you're a dog. It's yeah. like, okay, I'm just doing my job. It's funny because when I, when I first started DJing, I... I kind of wanted to be a house DJ and then a few gigs came up and they were really looking for R&B DJs. Yeah. And that's how I got into MacTab. That's how I actually got into Hype Friday. Actually, nice. it was also because of my uncle, if he's listening, he got me that gig. Nice. Yeah. So that was really cool. And I, it's as soon as I started doing those types of gigs, yep. I got painted as the R&B DJ. Yeah. And it was really, really hard for me to get house gigs mm. mm-hmm. because if I'm playing R&B all the time, where am I going to be playing house? Yeah. So I tried at the end of my sets to play a little bit of house here and there. Yeah. But um, yeah, just ended up getting painted as a house, as a R&B DJ, which I wasn't complaining about. It kind of broadened my repertoire yep. as a DJ. And I was yeah. really thankful because it opens up different skills when you can DJ different genres. It's it's the probably the hardest genre for me, I'd say, to mix yeah. R&B, hip hop. Like a lot, I had a guy on the weekend come up to me and say, Sorry, I'm going on heaps of tangents. That Bro, just happens with me in no, life. No, no, go for it, man. So yeah, he come up to me. He's like, oh, I only play techno. I don't know how you do this. And I was like, mate, if you can play techno, you can play R&B. You just learn how to mix a certain way, you know, however you like, with effects, without effects, scratching. You don't have to scratch. But as long as you mix them seamlessly and if you don't have to be in key, like you can mix out of key. Some DJs mix in key. I, I think it sounds better if you mix in key. It does sound better if you mix in key. But yeah. I said to him, you don't have to. Yeah, you don't like have you, to. It's, yeah, there's certain, you don't have to use echoes either, but... Echo makes it sound nice when mm. you're transitioning in and out of a song. Same thing. You don't have to use effects or like wordplay or something like that. Yeah. But it makes you, it sounds better and also more creative. Mm. And you're not the same R&B guy who what everyone else does. Yeah. And that's the thing as well. If you limit, I guess you're right. If you limit yourself to uh, like mixing in key, mm. then you're kind of limiting the songs that you can mix. That too. As well. That too, yeah. But there are some songs that you like, they're completely off and they just don't make sense. I'll be honest. I've never looked at the key. Ever in, <laughs> in, in fourteen years, ever. But I do sometimes. I pick it up with my head. I just mm. I'm mixing it. And I go, geez, they mix well. Mm. So then I just write them down. These mix well, and I look at them the same key. Yeah. And I didn't realize, but I just mixed them because I thought they would work in my head. Mm. At the time, I'm like, they asked for a request. Oh, that'll work. Yeah. Ninety six BPM. Sweet. Ninety seven. Bring one up. Bring one down. Did Easy. you ever have any transition songs? So you'd have a song that would go from say like 100 BPM to like 128? Because that was my thing. I used to love getting transitions. I have them. Yeah. But I forget to play them. So do you do manually transition? Yeah. I either manually transition or like pull the vinyl up and then move it to like uh, probably two o'clock. Yeah. And then keep vinyl on, press play, and it kind of slows it down and you can scratch into low flow rider or come back down to drop it like it's hot, something like you said, like that. Yeah, yeah. Or Gold Digger or something else, whatever we're yeah, going Yeah, something to. where the entrance is like, it's a statement in itself. That's what you want, yeah. yeah. It's something like even I have a mix of Forever, Chris Brown, and it's an intro, so you don't hear the... Yeah. It's an intro, you don't yeah, hear yeah. that. You hear that and you go, sick, like this is so good. Yeah. Like at my wedding coming up in April, I'm going to have that as my hey, congrats, second song. Man. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'm going to have that as my second dance floor song. Yeah, yeah. So I want that straight into that. I want the DJ to scratch it in. I'll tell him exactly how I want it. And the DJ's <laughs> good enough to do it. you just have a and just fucking tell nah, him? Nah, nah, I trust him. I trust him. <laughs> Shout out to Edgar. He's doing my job. Edgar, you're mad dog. I don't think I've met him, but you're a mad dog. Yeah, he's mad. He's very good. <laughs> so another thing I want to ask you was, so where do you see your career going in the future? It's a, it's a very good question. I've been, I'm in a crossroads right now because... As I, as I said, I'm getting married and going on a honeymoon and I'll be away for a bit this year. Mm. I, I'm i just trying to do more quality over quantity at the moment. Mm-hmm. So that's something that I'm working on short term in the next like year to five years yep. and do a lot higher paying jobs better for me that I can actually enjoy. Yep. And less like 100, I did 185 jobs like last year and the year before. 
Fuck, year man, before that's that, impressive. Year before that was like COVID, so it's just so hard. We're going to get into that as well. Yeah, to match up what, what they did. But yeah, I, that was where I got to, 185. And the next year, I think it was 186 or something. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, I'm too burnt out. Mm. And it's some of the jobs are like two hour sets, 200 bucks. Yeah. I was like, it's not even worth it. I'd rather do a wedding that pays a lot more and do two, three jobs a week than do those five sets a week and be worn out. Don't see my missus. Yeah. Don't get to see my family. Because that's the thing, right? Because especially if you're a local DJ and you're trying to get into clubs and things like that, most of the sets that you're going to get are going to be, if, if you're DJing in clubs, are going to be the one to two hour sets. Yeah. And then if... If you're half decent, mm. then they'll pay you the hundred dollars an hour. Yeah, and oh, then yeah. If, you, if you're brand new, you'll be lucky, lucky to get paid fifty. Yeah, and if not, for free. Yeah, exactly right. I yeah. think my first set I did that was a club club set was the brewery. Yeah, that was the club set. That's a big it was, club. It was a Thursday. It was yeah. one of my favorites. It was great. It was, I think it was one hundred and twenty five bucks for like two and a half hours. Yeah. So what's that? So that's about sixty two fifty. Yeah. And I thought that was really good. I thought that was really good. Like, mm. it was like a yeah, twelve thirty to two forty five or something. Maybe it was a bit more. That's than that. that's headlining though at that point. Like nah, twelve thirty to two forty five. I think it was post, or maybe it was twelve forty five. It was like post the main the main set. People still there. Yeah, yeah. There were heaps of people. It was packed as. So yeah, for me, yeah. best set of my night. Best set of my life. Yeah, yeah. Like I had my partner there at the time. I had. My cousins, I had my best mates. I had like 14, 15 people there. My parents even came. My dad came. Uh, he wanted to mad. watch me for my first DJ set. Like, yeah, he's yeah, a DJ. Well, first club set. It's my idol. Like, he's everything that I want to be. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, everything I've molded myself over is my dad and his business and the success that he has. Mm. So, to have them there, it was great. Shout out to dad. Yeah, shout out to dad. Love you, dad. <laughs> and it was great having them there to experience it with me. Like, even friends at my Bucks on the, a couple of weekends ago, they, mm. the, the, same, the same guys that were there supporting me were at my Bucks. Yeah, yeah. They were at my first set. And as I was going to say, uh, after Brewery, another first set was, which I'm coming back into clubs, mm. was $40 an hour at Fusion Nightclub in Fusion. Cronulla. Cronulla. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I know where Cronulla. that is now. And it was on a Sunday Arvo. I thought it was going to be a six Sunday sessions, like Northies goes off. Dead. Dead. Yeah. It was my two mates and me. <laughs> two mates and me. <laughs> at least you 40, got paid for it. $40. I think I did one hour too. Yeah. I, drove, I drove all the way there for 40 bucks. How and do you justify you gotta start, that? You have to start somewhere, but yeah, if you're going tolls, lucky I just go straight up Heathcote Road. Yeah, yeah. But if you, I was like, I was thinking 40 bucks. Like I said to my dad, 40 bucks, this is so cool. Like my mates are like, oh, I'm trading. I'm getting $22 an hour or something. I'm thinking 40 bucks is good, but they're doing eight hours. Exactly I'm doing right. One. Exactly I'm doing right. one on my main day. This is my this is my main income earning day on a, on a Sunday. Obviously you have Saturdays too, but- yep. It's Sunday, Arvo, and I'm getting 40 bucks. My dad was like, don't do it again. And I was like, dad, I've got to. Like, I did it three times, I think. And then mm. after that, I said, mate, I've got to go up. And he said, nah, there's no rate there. And I know he was charging like 80 or 100 bucks an hour. What, was this around the time when the lockouts were out as two? When you, when you were at that place? Oh, I don't know. Because like, I'm thinking around that time, they can get away with doing shit like that. Like a lot of clubs. Because especially around the lockouts and clubs mm. were closing down. Yeah. You know, less and less. There's probably a... Are you talking about like the older ones, like the King, King's Cross clubs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the lockdowns, not the lockdowns. Right. You might be right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so I – how you're 30 this year. I'm just behind you. I didn't get to go to anywhere in King's Cross. So – I missed out on all the good the good clubs that my DJ mates are older than me say, it was this was the best, this was the best. Man, I remember my first night when I was driving through King's Cross and I just – we were just driving. I was 18 because all my friends – I was the older one, so – yeah. All my friends weren't old enough to go clubbing yet. So we just thought, okay. fuck it, we'll just go for a drive. And I think my missus was with me as well. Mm. And we were driving through and I just remember a sea of people. It's fucking, there were so many people on the street. You, you have to go 5Ks an hour because people are just walking. Wow. And you, you have to be careful because you'll hit someone. And yeah, everyone's yeah. fucking drunk. And they smashed, yeah. Clubs everywhere. Like, honestly, that was probably the golden age yeah. of clubbing. It's, then, it stopped as soon as I turned 18. Oh, like King's Cross man. basically closed down. Yeah. Oh, the King hits. It was hits, very quick. The King hits, lockout laws come in, everything just started coming in. Mm. Because I did, I did Ivy, I played Ivy at 19. Mm -hmm. And by then everyone was like, this is the club now. Because I was at establishment at Ivy. Yeah. And they were saying, yeah, King's Cross is all, this is all closed now. All these jobs, are, all these gigs have gone. So they yep. know they were trying to come in there. And I was just luckily in there at the right time. Well, I've, even Ivy and establishment were still in the zone. Right, but yeah, they right. just—they were lucky because they had a big name. 
Right. Right. So everyone was still going there. Yeah. But if like some of the local or like the hidden clubs in Kings Cross, they all closed down because no one could get in after one thirty. Yeah, yeah. And you couldn't get drinks after three, and so everyone would go to Newtown. By the time you get to Newtown, fucking, you know, you want to go home after. Yeah. So, but I want to ask you something because I I definitely consider you to be one of the most successful local DJs in in Sydney. Thank you. No, you're very welcome. You deserve it. So, what do you do? You think? If you're going to be a successful local DJ, do you yeah. think there's got to be a certain type of person that can achieve that, like certain personality traits that a DJ needs to have to become successful? Yes, definitely. So I think, what do you think? Well, there'd be a few things. It's be, being a good person, obviously, to start with, but mm. the networking's a big one. So you have to be a people person. Mm. Like you're dealing with a lot of agents who have a lot of personalities and they, a lot of the time they are, they are the personality you need to get on with. Mm. So... I think and being friends with other DJs is a main thing as well because those DJs will become the promoters later on, will become the booking agents later on. And it's happened through the last eight years. Yeah. The guys I grew up with, the reason I get a lot of the work now is because nine years ago, the guys that were starting out with me are now the guys sometimes booking Ivy, booking Greenwood, these places that I'm still at, as well as creating a good relationship over time for the last seven or so years with Out Entertainment, Sound Agents and a few other agencies I work for. Yep. My mates are actually the ones who gives me the give me the worst work because they grew up with me and they know the type of person I am. Mm. They know I can read a crowd. They know I'm not going to tell someone to piss off if I, they come for a song request. Mm. And it's just very lucky. Yeah. I think you're absolutely right, especially the networking. Because mm. one I, I'll admit I was a naive young kid mm. that was like, oh I'm just going to let my DJing speak for itself. You know, I'm just going to let my mixing, you know, who will listen to my mixes and they'll want me to DJ at their club. No, they fucking won't. Okay? No, there's so many guys doing that. That's, that's the, the thing, right? That's the difference. There's Unless they're at your venue. If they're listening to you at your venue, mm. then maybe. What do you maybe. mean by listening to it? Like so if they, are, if they are actually listening to, no, if the, the promoters or the DJs are there actually playing before you or after you, mm. that's the only way you'll be able to sell yourself. Because yeah. it happens a lot too. You give, give them a chance, the DJ comes after you and he says, hey, I'm actually the booking agent or I'm the promoter here. I'll give a good word to the owner or whoever else is booking mm. and then you get the job because that's how I got establishment. Yeah. Same thing. A guy came after me and he said, I really like what you do. Yeah. I'll but watch it. When are you, on, are you available next week? And it just went on from there. Yeah. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, mm. but the just going out there and talking to people and actually yeah. networking, it's huge. It is the naivety of like what you said, of just yeah. being like, oh, it's kind of a little bit of an ego. Which, it is which I did have at the start as well, but mm. I was also too scared to have an ego because everyone's bigger than me and there were DJs that I listened to on the radio that I was like, oh, I'm DJing before, DJing after or mm. even like DJing for Jay Sean or like DJing for a few guys that I've been playing their songs for years. Yeah. And then I'm playing before them or playing after them or playing a close set where they played two hours before. I don't even see them, but I was there and the crowd's still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. So it's, it's, it's really fun. Yeah, man, 100%. Um, so... One thing that I was, if people are listening, because I was going to ask you what are some tips that you could probably give to younger DJs who are thinking about kind of following your footsteps. They want to adventure into, you know, going to clubs. What's something that you would tell them? Because for me, I would say, because I wasn't a people, I am a people person, so to speak. Like yeah. I definitely can get along and talk to someone. Yeah. Right. But I wasn't. A guy, especially when I was younger, I wasn't making the first move. I wasn't going up to them. Right. Right. And I feel like that's a huge thing to have as a DJ. You need to be able to, to talk to, uh, event, you know, promoters, event managers, even mm -hmm. even Sekis. There was, yeah, exa I, exactly right. To, that's a big one. Yeah. When I used to DJ at MacTab, I knew mm. all the Sekis. Yeah. And how nice does that feel too? Yeah. They're all nice, such nice guys. They are. Mo like, yeah. I well, 99% of them. Yeah. I was going to say, say that. Most of the <laughs> ones that I've met, even 99%. 100% that I've met have been really nice. Yeah. And sometimes they'll hear you play and they'll go, listen, I bounce at World Bar. Yeah. A actually, this did happen to me. He bounced at World Bar. He goes, if you come down, let me know. I'll try hook you up. And I didn't do anything about it. Mm. So, you know, it's opportunities like that that people shouldn't waste. And also, going back to what I was saying, going out there and putting yourself out there. Go and talk to people. Because mm. if you want to become successful, it's, it's a little bit of who you know rather than what you know as well. If, if not, a it, lot. It's mainly, yeah. yeah it exactly. It's mainly. Some people, yeah, I get messages all the time how do you have this set? Like, what are you doing here? What, what are you doing different to other DJs? Like, how can I get into there? Mm. I, 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 firstly, you tell them, be friendly. 
Like yeah. just be friendly to everyone. You don't have to be a people person. I'm not really a people person. Mm. I love like conversating as we are doing now. Mm. I'll love just talking to someone random, but I probably won't go out of my way to do it a lot of the time. At my work, obviously I need to, but I'll just come home to my missus, see my two best mates, have my wider group that we hang out with, and then that's it for me. I'm happy with that. I yeah. don't need other people to be like coming over to me and talking to me and hanging out with me all night. It's just mm. annoying. You go to different jobs. You get different friends everywhere. Everyone thinks you're your best mate. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm not like that. It's kind of fake a little bit too. Oh, very fake. Yeah. You like, very. you can tell when you can tell, especially when someone comes up to you and they're like, Hey man, Hey, can you do me a favor? Can you put this song on? Like mm. they'll, they'll have a, like a bit of a small talk and then they'll ask for something right after. Yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah, I, obviously I know what you're doing right now. Yeah. Um, what are some, <clears throat> some consider not considerations what are some things that probably people don't fully understand about being a dj so for me so one thing that i used to go especially when i would quote right and this would probably say the tail end of my career because i was getting to a point where i was like i don't know if i want to do this anymore i don't like i feel like i'm missing out on hanging out with my friends because that's another thing that if you're a young dj and you're looking at getting into it i think something you're going to have to really consider and really have a long think about is do you want to DJ on the weekends? Do you want to work on the weekends when everyone else is partying? Do you want to ruin your weekends? Yeah, honestly. That's and basically what it is. Yeah. So because all your friends will be going out, they'll all be going to the clubs and you'll yep. be DJing a wedding out in Camden or you'll yeah. be doing a corporate in the city. And yep. sometimes things will line up where mm. you might be in the city, they'll be in the city and you can go out after. But I used to get paranoid with shit like that. I'm not leaving my gear in my car in the city. I'm not no. leaving five thousand dollars worth in the car. I'll just bring towels. Yeah, just towels. Just yeah, or them. even like dark coloured towels and just cover it. Yeah. If I did go out, but I wouldn't, like you said, no, not to a club. Yeah. If it was exactly. like a mates engagement party or something, and I couldn't take it off somehow, there weren't DJs available. Mm. Like you don't know if they're going to get engaged. Yeah. You don't exactly. know when it's going to happen. So you just, if you can take it off, you will. Mm. But like as I said, for my two best mates, I I did recently take it off my. Shout out Adrian and Marcia. Uh, they got engaged recently and had their engagement party. Congratulations. Had, yep, congratulations. I had the gig booked for a year prior. Mm. So I had to ring up that client the day that I knew they got engaged. I said, please tell me your engagement party date ASAP. So yep. they got it done and they did work it around me as much as they could because good blokes and good ladies. <laughs> and so I called the client. I just said, I'm sorry, I, I can't do this job. I have a replacement for you. So I had them all ready. Yep. The DJ was ready to go. And then they end up doing the job. Yeah, it's two months prior. Well, at so, least you gave him more than enough notice, and you yeah. went out of your way. And, and you I make sure I've got an answer. I'm not going to give him a problem and not have a solution to it. Yeah, that's there the some big people thing. that like that. Some people yeah. just be like, I can't. Sorry, I can't. Sorry, come up. It happens all the time. Yeah, a lot of the work you can get. If I was not that busy, I'd get so much work because people are like the DJ just pulled out. Yeah, what do you mean the DJ just pulled out? Unless you're about to die. Yeah, or exactly. someone's about to die near you. I would. I can't do that. I, mm. I feel bad to the client. I've given them my time, and they give you a deposit usually, and. You don't want to let someone down like that. Yeah, and word travels fast, man, especially in our industry. Yeah. Well, I'm, I can't say our industry. Yeah, I, I, no, no, you can say our <laughs> industry. I'm happy to take that. You can but say yeah. our. No, so going back, so what are some considerations that you don't think people also understand about being a DJ? So another thing, just to like paint a picture. Yep. People don't understand the amount of time and effort that goes into finding good music. Yeah. That's something, that's just one thing that I can think of. Yeah, well, that's, these are the two things I'd probably say to a DJ coming up. They link in with what you're saying mm. is... Be very friendly to everyone that you that you meet. Anyone. You don't know who they are. Like imagine Justin Hems comes into uh, Ivy. Yeah. He's the owner of Maryvale. Yeah. Like imagine. Yeah. And you did, and you were being rude to him. You never get a job there again. Never. That's just something random. He just looks like a normal Aussie bloke. Have you met Pretty him? Pretty sure he's Aussie. No, I haven't met him. Okay. But one of my mates met him recently at the Maryvale party. Yeah, yeah. He's a nice guy. He was just dancing, well, sure with, it would be, dancing yeah. with everyone. Yeah. Like just dancing because all the DJs go to the Maryvale party. Sorry, we're going on a tangent again. <laughs> so, yeah, be friendly to everyone that you meet at nightclubs, prior, post, guests as well because they can also shit on your name. Mm. Um, and the second one is know your music. Yeah. So know your music like the back of your hand. So everything that, everything that I have in my library, I'll know the intro, the outro, and usually where the chorus starts. Obviously, I have cue points as well on my equipment, but mm. I know all my songs. I can do it all. I could play a whole set with my eyes closed just from hearing the reaction and seeing – um, seeing how everyone's going and how packed the floor is. So getting music, like obviously I'm on a, I'm on a DJ only subscription thing where you have to like prove you're a DJ by putting in your socials and stuff and they verify you and then you get to, you get to come and download music from there. 
Wow. So, yeah, it's a random thing. It's a DJ thing. I don't know why they do it. Okay. I, I just don't, don't think they want other people in there, which is odd. Like the intros by certain DJs, you get only get them on this specific side. It's real weird. That's yeah, interesting. It is very, it's very like clicky. It's like yeah. DJs only. And you can only know this by other DJs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. It's, so you can't, well. I could pass it on to you. Oh, bro, if you had, a, gonna use it if for? you had your, you still have your DJ page, page don't you? But I haven't used it in years. Uh, you have one. I reckon that that approve of you. They probably would. They would with, with if my you're showing ten followers. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> so you just start somewhere. Yeah, that's it. Well, <laughs> it, that's the thing with the podcast is starting to pick up a little bit, which yeah, I'm happy yeah. about. Good. Um, when with your sets, yeah. Do you pre not pre record, but do you like playing the sets? Yes. No. So or improv because I was an improv DJ as well. Yeah. Every I love it. set was different. Yeah. I uh, knew a lot of boys who would kind of plan all their sets. Yeah. And the, w- the worst thing is because I was such an improv DJ, I might accidentally play a song that they were going to play. Right. And it fucks their set. Oh, and then they get stressed they out. They fucking stress yeah. out. Yeah. That's probably the worst part of um, planning your sets. So I did plan, I did a Made in Malta set. Is I Maltese? Yeah. I did a Made in Malta set at the Roxy Hotel in Parramatta before it closed down. And it was just, it was not only Maltese people, but it was a Maltese event. Mm-hmm. It was one of my, it was like my, I think that was like my third club gig. So I've told you the first two. I think it was my, my third one. Yeah, my two yeah. best mates came again. Fuck yeah. It was really good. Um, and I got some contacts from there. Actually, one of the DJs I know now, he was there. Mm. And he, he was there 10 years ago when I first did that set. Yep. And I'm still mates with him now. So that, that's something that I learned. It was just, it was there randomly with like 20 people on the dance floor at like 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. in the morning. And I was finishing at like 2.30, same as every other graveyard set. Mm-hmm. And then he was there, liked my music, and I got future work. That's really good. I, that, yeah. that very rarely happened to me, but I think I think I used to not play at the correct places. Like Maybe. one of the gigs, and I'm not going to – actually, I'm not going to say where it was because they no, treated no. me very, very well. Yeah, that's fine. But um, there were like some gigs that I used to play at and I knew – going out there, it didn't really benefit my career mm. as a DJ. Like with my mentality now, yep. if I were to go back and DJ and start again at 18 and DJ again, yep. I would be a completely different DJ. I would definitely be a lot more outgoing. And as much as I hate to say it, I probably would do some more. I probably would do free gigs only mm. for places that I wanted to DJ at. Though. Right. Yeah. So let's say for example, uh, cause I used to knew, know a promoter who used to DJ at, or sorry, who used to promote at Ivy. Yeah. I met him a while ago. And he came up to me and goes, oh, I can get you a set. And I just kind of, I never pursued that. But if I did, and if he had asked me to play for free, I would have 100% played for free. Because mm-hmm. then it leads to other things. And I would love to DJ yeah. at that venue. So they, you, they would never get you to play for free. Not at Ivy. Not at Ivy. I don't reckon they would ever. No, I've been there as a nobody. Uh, I'm still a nobody, but as someone who. I wouldn't say you're a nobody. As people people do know me around, like at different nightclubs, mm. as you see me, oh, that, you're that short guy. You're a short star. Right? It's like, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's me. <laughs> Yeah, the little, the little guy who plays R&B. So I do see a few people around like, oh, you at the mill this week and stuff like that, which is nice like, mm. to have them thinking about me when, when they're going out. Well, you've got like, a reputation, so. Yeah, well, it's, it's fun. Like mm. I, I look up to other DJs like that mm. and they see people seeing me like that. I think, oh, thank you, but I'm not that cool. Like I'm, I'm playing here and I'm doing this. If you don't come, don't feel bad. Some people follow DJs around, so mm. it's really fun. Well, like well, I was saying, going back to the Made in Malta thing, recently, it's just jogged my memory now, coming back, yeah, and right. tangent again. Um, going back to the Made in Malta, I did plan that set out to the minute. Oh, so, yeah, that's right. We're talking about yeah, that. I did, yeah, yeah, I did plan that set out. And the boys, my best mates, do know that I showed them the list. It's still on my phone, I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. It has Made in Malta set one because I thought I'd play there again. Yeah, it closed yeah. down. My <laughs> Roxy closed down. <laughs> no, no more Made in Maltas. <laughs> well, they were, I think they're on boats and stuff now, but yeah, they're in Melbourne mainly. I planned that set out and I was playing like, I think Animals, Martin Garrix was new at the time. Mm-hmm. Oh, Huge there's another song, song called drop. Smile. It was like, a, it was a really good drop. Like it was mainly all EDM. It was all e- big room. Yeah, yeah. It was just big room into like, sh- build up again. Yeah, It's yeah, a yeah. drop into sh- back down again. Like <laughs> I know it sounds formula. silly on a podcast, but that's how, that's how it sounds. It's kind of like drop back down and a little increase, give them a bit of rest back into a drop again. It was yeah. just... It was like I had like a minute 11, start this song at a minute 21, start this song at minute 25, mm. fade down here, echo out. I literally wrote all these things down for the – it might have only been like an hour set too. Mm. So it was exactly all planned out. I did it and I loved it. 
I yeah. loved it because I loved the songs at the time too. Because you're playing the songs over and over again. Mm. And this was one of my first sets. So I, I just like, this is so good. But then from then on, never did it again. Yeah. But on the weekend, had a guy come up to me saying he's playing, another guy on the weekend, same job, come up to me and saying he's playing soon. I think it was Glass Island or Sea Deck or one of those. Oh, yeah, one yeah, of yeah. Those, I know the one. The, yeah, the boats. Yeah, yep. And he was very nervous about his, his set and he said, I'm planning it all out. Yeah. So I was like, that still happens, doesn't it? Yeah. He was 19, 20. I think if you're, especially if you're new in the industry, there's nothing yeah. wrong with planning it. No, like, no, no. Good. I've, good I've, on you. I planned one time mm. and that was for 2014, nice. your shot. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're wearing the shirt, aren't you? Yeah, it? I am yeah, representing. I, if I could turn around, I would. Did you get into your shot? Yeah. I, wild I, card or? Wild card. Nice. Yeah, because at the time, you can only, they only really give the, is it the contestant, the main sort of draw? I don't know what it's called. Yeah. So you've got the Alizé wild cards, which was what I was, and then you had the main competition. Right. And the people who made the main competition were right. mainly people who didn't know how to DJ. Okay. They didn't give it to people who were experienced. At that time, I'd been DJing for four years. Okay. So I, I tried every year, to be fair. I tried, I think, three times. Yeah. So I didn't get first, didn't get the second. You tried three times. So I got rejected once. I went. I didn't go as a wild card, though. Yeah, Stupid yeah. me. I don't know why I didn't, but I just didn't. They didn't choose you as a wild card? No, no I didn't go in in it. I didn't go in as a wild card. I didn't even tell them I DJed. I don't oh. know why. I don't know why I didn't. I kind of wanted to be in there as someone who... I think I, maybe I was trying to act like I didn't know and then I'd go in there. <laughs> they I see don't know. that shit, Yeah, man. I think they would have. I don't know why I was so silly. I don't think I would have done... I think I just didn't know about the wild card. I didn't understand it. I didn't think... Maybe I didn't put the value on myself mm. to be like, oh, I'm enough of a DJ or have enough experience at like... I think it might have been like 18, 19 to say that I haven't played in clubs... I don't want to go there and be like, I DJ, like every other bloody 14-year-old, 15-year-old guy does. I've been yeah. DJing for three years. Like where? 21st with 20, 30 people there on the dance floor. Mm. I didn't feel like I was maybe valid enough. So How I didn't want to go. How long you DJing for at that point? You know probably four out. years, five years. Oh, so yeah, so I was still DJing for a while, but I just didn't feel like, I didn't want to intrude. Yeah. And like there was probably some DJs, that, a lot of DJs that were older than me. They were all cool guys, dressing all cool. And I'm just this kid who my dad took me to Greenwood to go and sit down with this random guy I don't even know. Hardly spoke to me. When they spoke to me, I think I said my name. I actually, you're jogging my memory now. I don't remember what really happened. I just remember getting the rejection text or not getting a message and being like so sad. Yeah. Because oh, I was like man. rejected, man. I was like, I DJ, like, don't you want me in? And then I realized it's a wild card. And I was like, oh, it's my own fault. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was me. I, I shouldn't to have gone. Fair, I should have went as a wild card. To be fair, though, that's a very hard comp to get into. Yeah. So well, everywhere. There were so many like, there's contestants thousands. anyway. Hey, I yeah, don't know how many came in that year. But. I think the year that I competed in, in the wild cards, don't quote me on this if anyone's listening. I think yeah. there was about 30 people in the wild cards. Right. And there was like 76 as the contestants. Yeah, it's increased heaps now, I'm pretty sure. Oh, really? I'm pretty sure. I, one of my mates was in it recently. I don't know how he went. Okay. But it, and this is what I'm saying now. 10 years in, probably 90% of the judges of your shot, I know. I'm de- yeah. I DJ with Weekly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, cool. Yeah, like, you that's know cool. Them. I was like, that's cool. That's I was like, if I, they wanted me to judge, I would. Mm. But- I just still feel like, I don't know, maybe I don't deserve to judge yet. I think like you. How I, long in do you need to be to feel like that? Like, I'm only 27, and I see some of these guys that are younger than me feeling like they should go in. I'm like, mate, I've been DJing five, six years longer than you, and I don't feel like I should yet. I think you, I think you kind of like are very, very humble, and you, you need Thanks. to, I think you, you definitely deserve to be in that competition for sure if you ever decide Went to back go in. Into, I don't even yeah. know if they do it anymore. I haven't checked in years. No, they, they definitely do it. They definitely do it? Yeah, they do it. It's massive. Like everyone wants to go on it. Yeah. Like, because obviously you want, you want to know how to DJ and I think, I'm assuming it's all free because the, yeah. the guys that were doing the lessons as well were my mates. Yeah. Oh, wow. Like my mates were DJing and how showing them. I know a lot of, that's the thing. You just know a lot of DJs being friendly. That's what mm. it comes down to. They just be nice to people and they're nice back to you. Like mm. just don't talk shit about people. Like it's so simple. Yeah. 100%. Like because it goes around and I just don't. I just, unless you owe me money. A hundred percent. Yeah, and that's not yeah. even me joking. Like, unless you owe me money, then all the DJs talk about it. Yeah. And we have a similar interest because we're all the person who's at the back going, please pay, like, just pay us. This is what we do for a living. Mm. A lot of us anyway, the ones that don't get paid sometimes are the ones that are like, yeah, can, can we just get paid, please? When you were younger, did, were you, did you want to do mainly like club gigs? Because I was like that. When I was younger, when I was about 17, 18, I had this vision in my head of DJing at Stereosonic. Ooh, being nice. And head, not, maybe not headlining, yeah, but at least yeah. DJing main stage. Yeah. Right. That was a big dream of mine. And I tried mm. to achieve it. But, and I, at one point I was doing really well. I was making like bootlegs and trying to do mashups and things yeah. like that. And More putting, than me. What? 
the thing is, I was really consistent. I was starting to get a bit of a following. I yeah. had about 600 followers on SoundCloud and I nice. get, like, it's decent. Like, yeah, yeah. And it, you got to start somewhere. People think that's nothing, but it's not. It's really hard to even get one follower. Yeah, exactly. Because you, you get your mates, you get your 15 mates, you get your parents if they make an account, you get, that's 30. But yeah. then where do you get the other exactly. 570 people from? Like, it's, it's a lot of, that's a lot of people. You get 570 people in a room. You've got, a decent, you've got a decent dance floor. That's how I look at it. So if, especially with the podcast, right? Because on YouTube, I'm averaging about, let's say, 40 to 50 people. Yeah. Bro, 40 to 50 people, that's a full classroom. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just listening to this conversation. Yeah, right it's got to start somewhere too. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And, you know, it's exactly what you're saying. You know, 600 people is not shit by any means, but, yeah. you know, it's not small either. 600 people is a fucking lot of people. Mm. In, that's my whole school. Yeah, right. Yeah, 600. Oh, it's actually right. less than that. My Small school. school. What school did you go to? I went to this um, tiny, it was called All Saints Grammar Greek Orthodox Grammar School. Two gram- grammar twice? No. Did I say grammar so All twice? Saints Grammar, yeah. All Saints Grammar Greek. Oh, sorry. I did say grammar. All Saints Greek Orthodox Grammar School. That's right. Okay. Yeah, that's where I went. Yeah, right. Yeah, that was in a little tiny school in Belmont. And I think the max kids was about like 450 or something. Wow. It's tiny. Jeez, there's more people in your whole school. That's that's crazy. Yeah. Thinking about it like that. So I would have like one and a half times my school people raving. Yeah. That's mad. That's nice. That's very good. And that the following you means they're listening to every mix that's uploaded too. Yeah. So they can share it to their friends. And that's just how it works. Mm. That's just how self-promotion works as well. It's like free marketing. It was great because I could see the, the, the results coming. So I would see like I'd upload one mix or one mashup and you get 400 yeah. plays and then for another yeah. one, then you get 600 and then yeah. for another one, then say 750. And then yeah. every single one started going up and up. I'm like, oh, I got it. And then I just stopped. Yeah. And I don't know why. And then I tried to get back into it and it was the biggest fucking mission for me. Yeah. And then I think it kind of all went downhill from there. So mm. I will. It's a lot of time, a lot of effort as well. Well, it's also expensive, like the expensive hobby to have. Obviously the mixes aren't as much. Mm. But it's a lot of time. Like for me, it's a lot of time. Especially if you're going into production. Yeah. Right? Oh, if, you, yeah. if you're going to start producing music and if anyone's listening out there yeah. who's thinking about, let's say they want to become like a DJ mag, top 100 DJ, the absolute, you need to produce music. And yeah. I was like, oh, I'm going to be a DJ mag top 100, but I'm not going to produce music. Like, oh. no, that's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to go down that road, you need to learn how to produce. Yeah. I'm not aiming for that just yet. Yeah. I have Ableton and everything, Ableton Suite. Bought it eight years ago. Never yeah. touched it. You never touched it? Never touched it. Maybe you, this will motivate me to get onto it <laughs> and to do it in the next you, five, six years. Do you plan on like making music and things like that? I've never planned on it. Okay. And if I did, I'd make Deep House. I just love House. Deep House. I just love vibe. it. It makes me feel good. That's what yeah. I want. I don't care about others. And mm. that's maybe the best way to do it. Do it for yourself. And then hopefully if you like it, other people will like it. Mm. And if they don't, then I'd change. I think but you, you, are, can't, you can't make what you don't love. You're absolutely right. You, you have to really, it just makes it a lot easier to do the work. If you don't, like, for example, like, and again, I'm kind of being a little bit narcissistic, but with this podcast, mm. right, I enjoy doing everything. Yeah. Right. So even though, yes, it's a lot of work and like I'm working a full-time job plus trying to figure out a way to go to the gym, plus making time for my wife, plus trying to put, make some time for the podcast, mm-hmm. you know, but I love doing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that, that helps. That's yeah. the main, that's the main I think motivation, if you don't love it, don't do it. Yeah. That's, oh, that's in life, that's kind of like a motto I'd live by as well. If mm. I stop loving DJing, I won't do it again. That's, and I think that's what happened to me because I start, especially when I started having the thoughts of, you know, I, I feel like my weekends are going, you know, I don't, I'm only young once, you know, I, I, I missed out. You know, one thing, I'm, I'm going to go on a tangent a little bit. Yeah, that's Because this used to annoy the fuck out, like now thinking about it, this annoys the shit out of me when people say this. Yeah. So people would go, oh, let's say your friend's got a 21st birthday. Okay, just as an example, you're young. Mm-hmm. And you're still young, what am I saying? And you have an opportunity to go to a gig, right? But you know if you go to the 21st, you're going to make a lot of memories. But if you don't go to the 21st and you do the gig, you'll make money. And one thing that people used to say to me is like, don't think about it as, you know, going to you know going out with your friends and things like that think about it as if you're going out and you're spending two hundred dollars and then you spend two hundred dollars on the night out you're actually spending four hundred and fifty dollars because you're losing the money that you could have made that night yeah i get it yeah it makes sense but it's also it's a bit of a manipulation for you to go and do the gig yeah that's how i pessimistic as well they're kind of bringing you down a bit yeah exactly and it does make sense it does that's something my dad my dad would say it as well because he'd be like build your brand 
Yeah. Your, your friends will have another birthday. You can go meet up with them again a different day. It depends what type of how good the friend is too. Mm. So I didn't have a lot of friends. As I said, I've got a lot of a close group of friends that I love so much. Yeah. And I like handpicked them from like the last 27 years. Yeah. So that's the same thing. My friends would never do that to me. Same as like drinking and drugs and everything else. My friends would never force me to do any of that. Yeah. So that's that's kind of very lucky on my behalf, but it does that did happen heaps. Yeah, it's the same. I feel exactly the same as you. Yeah, because it's like like honestly, I, I don't, excuse my French, but at the same now I think about it and I just go fuck off. Like yeah. now, if I could go back in time and someone said that to me, yeah. I would just go out now. Yeah, because I now I feel like it's manipulation because I yeah. feel like they're saying, oh, you're gonna lose money now. You know. So would you do the job or would you go out? No, I'd go out. Just okay. because I feel like they're trying to manipulate me to do the and gig. And the, then they're the people that were going out that wanted you to go with them that are manipulating you? No, so they would have the gig that they would wanted me to do, right? Oh, really? Yeah. That's odd. Yeah. They're making you feel like that. Yeah. Jeez, I don't think I've ever been made feel like that by someone who wants me to do the job. But it, right? it, I don't think they purposely tried to do it. Yeah, it's just a... Yeah. Like it's it, a technique. It, it makes it's sense though, right? It makes sense. But <laughs> yeah. I, look, I look at it now and I go, fuck, like, I wish I, I, wish I just went out. Mm. Yeah. So... Anyway, one thing I want to yeah. yeah, one thing I want to talk to you. Well, it's because you didn't actually get to go out during the lockout laws. Well, yeah. before the lockout laws, yeah, you don't really know what it was like to how there were so many gigs around and being a DJ around that time. So, because I was going to ask you what how the lockout laws kind of affected you as a DJ, but it probably really didn't affect you that much. No, it didn't. Not at all. Yeah, because I was coming up. I think nineteen twenty was when, which was about eight nine years ago. Mm. Or eight years ago when I started to get into the clubs and lockout laws were there. Establishment was my one of my main jobs consistently. Mm. Yeah, and the lockout laws were definitely there. Yeah. They were still there. Like I'm pretty sure they were because I don't – maybe unless I didn't have constant work, that's the thing. You only realise it when you have consistent work. Yeah. Like if you're doing it once every now and then and your set's 9 till 10.30, mm. you know, who cares about lockout laws? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For you. For me because you're doing different jobs everywhere, different places. Mm. Like you go on a Cronulla at 12. I think it finishes at 12.30. Northeast closes oh, at 12.30. A Cronulla doesn't so what's, matter. So what's There's it no matter? And, and the Cronullians only stay in Cronulla. Mm. Like the Cronullians. The Cronullians. <laughs> I just call them Cronullians. They just, they just stay there. They don't know. Sometimes you say, oh, have you ever been to Ivy? What's that? Where's that? Is that near Fusion? I'm like, nah, what do you mean? That's Seriously. Some people when I was at, because I played at, Nor- I, play, I still play at Northeast when I can. Uh, Fusion's gone. COVID. Mm. Um, That's one thing you definitely went through because COVID would have had a huge impact on your career. Yeah, it did. Stop there for a sec. Going back on a tangent. Yeah. I lied before. It wasn't Fusion my first job. It was Sting Bar. You ever oh, seen Sting yeah, Bar? Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember Sting it Bar. It wasn't even Fusion. It was Sting Bar with my first job. It's pretty close by though, isn't yeah, it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have Northies and you come up the road and Sting Bar was on the right. Yeah, it was next to, I think it's Goods Money. Yeah, or something. Yeah, 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 I know the place. Exactly, yeah. I don't know if it's still there. I think it is still there. I have honestly. I, I don't no know. Idea. See, I, I haven't been there in that long. I've been I go to all these, but I don't. Well, I don't even look to the right when I drive past. <laughs> That's the issue. I should, but wait, is it across the road or was it on the same side as all these? I thought it was the same, same side. Same side. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. And then Fusion was all the way down in that little cul-de-sac. Yeah, 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 yeah. Back, yeah, back section. Yep. Where you come down the main strip. Yeah, I don't even know. I don't know if Sting Bar's still there. Gonna yeah. Get. Honestly, I wouldn't have a clue. I, I never. Yeah. I knew of the place. Yeah. But and that was why me. it was no money in it. There was no money in that at all, Sting Bar, because there was no one there. Yeah. It used to pop off on Saturdays, people were telling me. But that's, again, it was probably pre-lockout laws. I mm. I didn't see Sting Bar ever going off when I was around. But even, pre, even pre-lockout laws, that didn't really affect Cronulla because that – Oh, because they – I think they went longer there though. No, no, no. So the way the lockout laws worked yeah. was it, they had a, like a perimeter right. around. So King's Cross was part of it. The city was part of it. Right. And it, if you were part of this particular area – then a couple, of, I don't know all of them, but a couple of them, the big one was after 1.30, you weren't allowed in the club. Yeah. That was one of the big ones. Not in Cronulla though. I'm pretty sure Cronulla didn't, wasn't affected by the lockouts. It might have been affected by maybe when you can take shots. Matt, yeah, that's, maybe that's like usually that. was after one o'clock or something. You can't be a shot. It has to be in there with something else or even in a cup. I, I know, which is so odd. So dumb. It's so odd. Yeah. Yeah, was, I don't drink, but have you seen my mates go up there and being like, can we get shots for the table? Oh, it's 1.05. It's like, yeah, yeah, but you can't do shots. It's like, come on, what's the difference? Like, just let us let them drink. If they want to drink, enjoy it. Just let us do it. Man, they're adults; they can make their own decision. If yeah. they want to get fucked oh, up, they, if you're going to see them up. go to king hit someone, yeah, kick them out. Yeah, like, they're not just going to randomly get up and start throwing punches from one shot. Yeah, oh, man, like, that's the main thing that I what, see from the lockout laws. Well, anyway. that's that's why it stop came the in, fighting. Right? Yeah, yeah, but 
Anyway. It's going to happen everywhere. They're, they're idiots everywhere. The majority of us are good. Like the majority of people mm. in Sydney, I'm, I'm assuming, would be good. I'm speaking very ignorantly. No, I, but think, I think you're right. I yeah, you're right. there's always that small amount in anything, in religion, in... Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, whatever it is. There's always that small amount of people that take it too far and it's sometimes too silly and they... It happens at all the jobs. Every job I'm at, there's one idiot. Yeah. And it's just how it is. I don't even be angry to them or anything. I'm just like, oh, that's you. Yeah. Well, that's that you. And I try and be nice to them and usually they're nice back. That's that's the thing, right? Yeah. If you're usually nice to them, then oh, yeah. they reciprocate. They're it. your best mate. Yeah. If but a then fight breaks out, they'll cover you. Yeah. So that's another, that's, a, <laughs> your that's personal, you do it. your personal bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> so how, so we'll, we'll go back to the COVID thing. How did that kind of affect you as a DJ? Oh, that. You don't have to get into too much. No, if you don't I, want to. I, mentally, emotionally, it was the hardest time I've ever been through in my life. I think my partner was a good support, but it was really hard for her because we were at uni and then we finally graduated uni and I was going through, I think we had half a year after finishing, really good year, really mm. good year. And then it come into the start of COVID and my friends and I went on a cruise. We come off the cruise and we get this thing at Isle of Pines. We were going around like Vanuatu and stuff, Isle of Pines. Isle of Pines wouldn't let us dock oh, because no. of COVID. And we're going, what the hell is this? We got a letter from the captain. Oh, so you didn't know about any of nah, this No, we're on this boat. We're on, we're on a cruise in February when it come to Australia, when it come over. When it yeah, sent. Yeah. And then we get off this boat and I get calls from my mum saying, what, what ship are you on? Don't and they think it's our, on They that. think it's our ship. No, it wasn't. But oh, right. I'm stressing out thinking, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. And then they say these ships come and it was the first one that brought it over. It wasn't us. We, we sprinted off and we're like, what's going on? And then we get out and from then it started and just cancellation after cancellation. Like just, just as, I, as I have now, I have most of the year booked. Most mm. I think I have like five Saturdays left this year. And That's next huge, year I have man. two jobs booked, which is great for me. Like I don't mm. want too many booked in advance. I have a few friends getting married and stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. So I had the whole year booked and it just went, the agencies that I work for that I mentioned before, they just gave us an email or even like a big message in our group saying, guys, we're cancelling for the foreseeable future. All the jobs. I had six months of work booked, done, just all gone. gone. It's just gone. And the weddings, all gone. The corporates, all gone. The Christmas parties, everything. There was one wedding I remember doing in August, in an August of that year. So I think it was Feb all the way till June. I had to get a job at Coles online. That's Which was, was really fun. It was working. really fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I loved it. The guys there were great. The girls there were great. The staff. I, I had a really good relationship with them. Like mm. it was really good. I ended up quitting. I think it was like I think I did a year and a half, mm -hmm. and it was great fun. Like for me, obviously, it was. I'm I'm a little guy. And you're, you're quite lucky to actually get a job around that time. I, I was applying everywhere because mm. I'm a DJ. I have no qualifications. I have a uni degree in music. Yeah. And that's it. So they saw me and like, no, we don't want this DJ. Probably has a shit work work ethic. He little, probably won't turn they know. up. Yeah, and I'm just – and I, I finally got an interview at Coles in Glenmore Park. Shout out to Coles. <laughs> and Michelle, one of the ladies who was um, our manager, she was great and it's just – had interviewed me and I got the job and that, that kept me sane. Yeah. So my fiancé, now fiancé, shout out to Tara as well. She, um, she was with me at the time, I think a few years in, and we both got a job at Glenmore Park Coles. So we'd drive together. We'd see each oh, other at Coles cool, and she was at the front or sometimes helping in online and she'd be at the front, I'd be at the back and we'd be doing, um, I'd be driving the trucks around, come back, see her afterwards for a bit then go home. So That's it was cool. great. It was actually really good fun. Like thinking back, it was good fun. I don't want to do it ever again, yeah. but it was really good at the time. Well, to at least keep you me had, it had I had to do something because it went Feb, I think it went March, April, June and I went, I'd be fine, three months. I keep everyone inside for a bit. Mm. It'll go away. That was my optimistic view. I'm trying to be as optimistic in life as I can mm. around my friends, around life everyone. Life's always half full. I try to. It's hard, but sometimes I, I try to do that. And it was like June and it went, I think it was 25th of June or something. And I'm, I'm sitting at home like nearly having anxiety attacks in my dad. I'm like, dad, what, do, what am I going to do? Because dad's like successful. He's, he has a few houses. Like they're, mm. they're my mom and dad are happy. So mm. They didn't have anything to stress about. They're like, okay, world's well, going like this. It's fine. Like we, we have things behind us. You're at home, Hayden. I wanted to move out with my missus. Mm. Little did she know, but I was also trying to look for an engagement ring. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you've so all these little money. things, yeah. all these little things that I wanted to do to like develop my life. We get three months in and I'm thinking, if it's three months, how long is this going to go for? It's Nothing's getting better. And then July came and it was even worse. Then I got the college job and I was just doing that. Mm. 
for as long as I could. Did you have any odd jobs here and there though when you were DJ or like during COVID I, or no? I know I did an August wedding, sitting down, sit, seated wedding, easiest money I've ever made in my life. Just background music. I felt so bad for them though. Like I was, I was playing, no, nah, I was playing dance music. We just went, they just said to me, let's just play dancing the whole night. Yeah, let's yeah. just do six hours of dance. I said, sure. And Fuck we did yeah. it. They couldn't get up and dance. You couldn't order at the bar. You had to, the staff had to come to you. I think we had masks then as well. So that wasn't fun at all. We had masks. I was wearing a mask, setting up my equipment, wearing a mask. Yeah. Nearly died. Like I couldn't, I get really hot and sweaty as it is. Oh, like same. Like setting up. Same, man. Just doing a setup, trying to make it all nice and neat and getting everything in. And then just wearing a mask. I couldn't, half the time I'd say, right, guys, I have to take it off. I can't actually breathe right now. And they'd be like, yeah, sure. It's all good. And then we take it off, put it back on. Oh, the police are coming. Put it back, put your masks on. I, I remember I went to a wedding and it was just, this was like a hush hush sort of thing. And so they closed the them. blinds and they just go, oh, yeah. it's not here. It happened a lot. I, oh, yeah. Fortunately, I wasn't out of few of them because I feel like I would have got sick a lot quicker, mm. which is not bad and not good. I only either. went to one, to be fair. Yeah. Like that. There were a lot of my DJs, a lot of mates that I was doing, not, not even posting because you, you're not going to post about it, are you? No, nah, fuck no. You so can't. a lot of the guys that I know were, were doing work, not a lot of work. Because it's the, up to the bride and groom and also the venue. The venue can use their, lose their license. Oh, 100%. Yeah, they can so get really they So they weren't over. many that I knew of, but there were DJs that were doing it. I, I did none that were hush-hush, mm. but the ones that I did were either masks or limited numbers, sitting She's down with their napkin, doing these ones and dancing yeah. <laughs> like that. Like, and then it got to the point where you could dance at your seat. Mm. You could dance at your seat, but you can't dance on the dance floor. Because COVID can see, well, you're, you're sitting, oh, so we can't get you. It's just ridiculous. Can't get you when you're sitting, but if you're there, we'll get you. Yeah, yeah, stay at your table and dance <laughs> yeah. around and give everyone COVID at your table. <laughs> COVID's on the dance floor, yeah. guys. <laughs> oh, your kids, your child's at another table. You're at this table. You're talking with your partner. Your partner's going to talk to someone else. They have kids at another table. If you're sick, they're sharing it around. doesn't matter yeah, what happens. it doesn't happens. matter. So just let's get, all get sick. If we're going to do it, let's all do it. Get over and done with, and then you wait whatever, whatever week, how many weeks, or what was it then, two weeks? I think 14 it was two, days? Yeah, 14 days 14 you had to go days. into isolation. Yeah. And then you That's had to crazy. have a negative. Mm. And if you didn't get a negative, I think you – I can't remember exactly what oh, it was, how but bad it was insane. Is it? Yeah, we can't even remember now. How good yeah. is that? I mean, it's <laughs> great. I'm <laughs> optimistic. I'm optimistic. I, it's good that we're past it now. We can't even remember. But yeah, yeah, yeah. two weeks for a sickness you think now, you think, jeez, mm. that's good, a long time. What's well, good to hear now that, you know, you're pretty much – now that it's – it seems like it's over, which mm. thank God for that, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now that your Saturdays are pretty much back, you're fully booked until the end of the year. Yeah, I was, got five Saturdays left or something. I was saying to someone the other the other day, I don't remember COVID as yeah. much as I at – the, at the time, it's the end of the world. Everything always is. You're sitting in it, it's the end. But then you think about later on, I was like, why was I stressing so much? Mm. I just like the constant flow as well. I'm not – I'm I'm a structured guy. I'm a very OCD guy, so I'm very clean. Mm-hmm. And I'm very structured. We, my partner and I have recently moved out together and we actually sees how like I'm, I'm hectic around the house. It's crazy. Like I try and make everything, everything needs to be clean. And maybe because I don't have that schedule in my life. Mm. I don't work the nine to five or I know what I'm doing every day. So I try and keep it as structured as I can yeah, yeah, in yeah. my life. I yeah. think that's what it is. I'm trying to work it out. Yeah, that's right. To try and be less crazy everyone, towards. Everyone works, you know, my missus has to live ways. with it and I try and make it like not as ridiculous for her. So. That's what I'm trying to work out, but I think that's what it is. Yeah. And the constant work's been great. Like it's it's the best I've ever been. I'm really happy. It's best I've been with my partner, with my friends, that's with awesome, my family. Man. So I'm really lucky. Yeah, I'm very lucky. I'm going to, because we're actually starting to creep up soon. So yeah. I'm going to ask you, one thing I like to do yeah. at the end of every episode yeah. is I like to ask a hypothetical question. I'm ready. So here we go. <laughs> hypothetical question, red, blue, red pill, blue pill. No, yeah. It's not really red pill, blue yeah, pill yeah. but anyway. If a time machine could take you anywhere for one day, where and when would you go? That's why I asked you if you wanted to know beforehand. <laughs> no, no, no. It's okay. That's good. One day. It might. It's nothing major, but I want to go and see Avicii at Tomorrowland. Oh, I know it's nothing massive cool, and man. it's probably silly for me to say, but... I'm not going back to like something major in life and stopping mm. him from like being born or something or like no nah, no nah, something. Like, I'm going that. back to something fun that's gonna make like obviously he's not here anymore. Yeah yeah. Um yeah, Avicii at Tomorrowland. I used to watch it all the time. Like, I used to sit there on YouTube just live streaming it in Belgium. It was so sick. I was like, this is the best. I did see him at Good Life once. Yep. But you're going back to see. I don't even know what year it was. It might be 2012. The, the Tomorrowland. Year that levels dropped. 
Is that the one you're Probably, about? You might be right. It might be that one. And he was playing like Fade Into Darkness. He was playing like all those tracks. Avicii. Sun, um, I don't even know. Actually. Avicii came the tracks. to Stereosonic in 2011 because I remember I was okay. in year 12. Yeah. And I was 18 and I just finished. And it was like two weeks or a week after schoolies, Stereosonic was playing. Wow. And Avicii was there, and levels just dropped that year. It, it might be, you might be right. Yeah, you, I might have been the 2011 I was watching. Yeah, but I think he did another one in 20 because he was so big. Yeah, levels was, was massive, bro. That song was like ridiculous for like two years. Oh, it's, people it's, kept making new remixes and new like. Yeah. Oh, there was there's, there's a, the I have a levels in reverse. Someone actually reversed <laughs> the melody somehow and made it work. Yeah, yeah. And I was like levels and um, got you. Somebody I used to know. Yeah, like yeah. random stuff like that. But that would be the time. I used to watch it. I knew the whole Tomorrowland set. I used to watch him doing this and flicking his hand up and doing all that. Oh, I would love crazy. to go back to that and sit in. Obviously, I'm way too short. I would love to be on someone's shoulders or something because I would actually see him because there were just what are you people. About? You're like six foot three. Don't talk yourself down like that. I am actually. You yeah. are. Sitting here. DJ That's Shorts are. Exactly, like exactly, exactly right. <laughs> yeah, that, I think that would be the time. Let's mm. say 2012 Tomorrowland, Avicii set. Yeah, mad. Yeah. For me, it was. I'd probably want to go into the future. I don't know exactly oh, yeah. when or when, yeah. but I'd love to just see like if it ever did happen, which I don't even know how it would happen, just major advances in technology, like being able to teleport and like wormhole to different love planets. Love that. that would yeah, be that, would be, that would be ideal. Yeah. If that I had any cool. wish apart from like flying, yeah. if I could fly, I'd want to teleport. Yeah. Because if you don't, you don't have to fly there physically, I'll just go like this and just Im- get there. Imagine going to Greece. I'm there. Yeah, right. I, want, I want to go to a beach in Italy. It's like, okay. See you there. See ya. Yeah. I'll be back. I'll be back hey, in two seconds. Hey Tara, I'll be back home in about thirty minutes. Okay, what are you doing? So I'm just I'm just in Italy. How'd you get there? I just teleported. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I know. that's the goal. Man, thank you for coming on the show. I, honestly, I had so many other fucking questions for you. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe we maybe spoke. we'll do we'll do a part two. Yeah, we could do another one. Yeah. yeah definitely. So if you want to do a bit of a plug for yourself, kind of where can people find you or anything like that? Yep. So you can find me on Facebook, DJ Shortstar, Instagram, TikTok. Mixcloud, Soundcloud. I think that's about it. Yeah, mad. So, guys, um, if you can please like and subscribe <laughs> onto the video. I've got a YouTube. Um, if you're watching this, you know I've got YouTube. I've got a TikTok, Zaps Podcast. I've got an Instagram, Zaps Podcast. I have an iTunes account, Zaps Podcast. So, if you could all just, you know, um, you know, follow the page. If you like the content, if you don't, eh, whatever. <laughs> but, you know, thank you for coming on the show, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Good, doing good things. Thanks, bro. All right, guys. I'll see you in a fortnight. Ciao.